Hello YouTube friends. I wanted to catch you up on a project that I was talking about a little while ago uh, when I was doing a roundup of all my knitting projects and I showed you uh, the jumper that I'm making for Agnes for her second birthday and it's here and it's finished and I'm really pleased with it but what we have to do with it now is block it. So I was reading the instructions. I'll leave a link in the description below to the pattern, which is from a someone I found her on Etsy. It's called North Child. And the jumper that I made is called Farl, F-J-A-L-L. But like I say, I'll leave a link to it below. And in this pattern that I downloaded, I do like those downloadable patterns. There's instructions for blocking it, wet blocking. So I'm going to do it now uh, and see what it looks like when it's done. But I was a little tiny bit surprised by the wet blocking instructions. I usually do block my knitting when I'm, when I'm finished with it. It does make for a better finish. But it says here to wet block, immerse the finished piece in lukewarm water with a little shampoo added. And I read that and I thought, well, I don't really use shampoo. I use a block of solid shampoo that I buy, um, coconut solid shampoo. And then, blah, 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 leave it for an hour and then remove without stretching and rinse in hair conditioner. And if I don't have shampoo, I definitely don't have hair conditioner. So what I've dug out uh, from my little laundry room through there, I've got these lovely, lovely um, natural soap flakes in here. So I'm going to use some of those for the first part and then just ordinary fabric conditioner which I've got this uh, what is it gardenia and vanilla which softens and cares so I'm going to use that so I'm at the sink because what I want to do is block this um, jumper this sweater jumper sweater pullover whatever you want to call it I like many things about it one of the things I like most of all is that there's knitting the round from the neck down, there's no sewing up, so that there's no seams, and I don't like sewing up knitting. So I'm gonna get the, so I need to run the water till it's lukewarm. And uh, was it Eric Morecambe who said, well, it looks warm to me. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. And then just put a few soap flakes in. It's not like it's dirty, I just need the detergent to relax the fibers a little. So yeah, we're going to do that, but then I have to leave it for an hour. All right, I've got other things I can be getting on with. So just a few of these lovely, lovely natural soap soap flakes, and I'll three pinches <laughs> arbitrarily decided, and I'll mix that while it's really, really hot, and then I'll make it lukewarm. Because I think. All the instructions are about it not felting. It's really easy to felt this and I don't want to do that. So I'll get it lukewarm. And then I'm going to just put the jumper in there. I'll just move it up here so you can see. I won't get any soap in my tea. Just made a cup of tea. Okay, here we go. And it goes, immerse in water. And what does it say? Leave to soak under the surface for at least an hour. Okay, that's fine, I can manage that. Okay, well we'll go back to that later and do the second part, which is the rinsing and the uh, um, conditioner or the fabric softener uh, and then we'll pin it out and block it out on a towel. So that's that uh, waiting to be done but this is the box that all the stuff was in and I've got a fair bit of the beautiful wool. It's this wool uh, from Lopi. I think I showed you this last time. L it's called Little Lopi. I don't know what that means. Uh, Norwegian wool. And because some of the patterns only needed to have, you know, a very small amount of colour in there, 
it means I've got loads of some of them left over because these were just feature colours uh, and it's only a child's jumper so it got me thinking that uh, it might be nice to knit with this again because <laughs> I really really enjoyed knitting it it was so quick to knit and it wasn't as complicated as all that yes it took some concentrating when I was doing the um, the yoke and so on and I did make one mistake uh, but it's easy enough to unpick it and go back I don't mind doing that but I did buy this book uh, second hand um, online which is uh, it's a very 1970s book I have to say all the designs in here are really really old but it's full of beautiful um, neck down I liked the neck down part very much it's full of loads more, which of course will mean that if I make any more, I'm going to have to buy a load more wool, aren't I? <laughs> That's all right, though. So, yeah, it's kind of got me interested in knitting that kind of um, pullover. But uh, knitting projects then, there's a few other things on the go. I went to a friend of mine organised a fantastic wool event uh, a few weeks ago um, over in County Durham. It's absolutely brilliant and there was all sorts of stuff on, for sale there as well as you might imagine but I bought now you won't be at all surprised to see what I bought I got it back home again and took it out and I thought actually that's not as green as I remembered it being but it is still pretty green isn't it and I've I've rolled one on I've taken one off the hand because I bought three they're f um, are they 100 grams this there are 100 grams so I've got 300 grams and I'm knitting a swatch now uh, on different size needles to give me an idea about the tension once of a day I just used to cast on and knit in the recommended needle size for that yarn and then wonder why whatever I made didn't fit or didn't look right so I've become um, an evangelical swatcher now <laughs> <laughs> those swatches among you will know exactly what I mean and so this little swatch here I started off with um, size 5 needles which is what they recommended but I've taken it down to 4s because that's what my knitting tension says I should do now what am I knitting this is another download and I'm not saying uh, I'm going to make this for sure but I'm going to try it and see if I like it or not and it's a pattern called N-U-U-K, it's another Norwegian pattern from, um, oh, here's my glasses, who's this one from then? Nordic Knit Life. So I'm, I've gone down the Nordic rabbit hole, haven't I? And this isn't, um, no it doesn't say exactly who designed it. Oh yes it does. Jonna Heitala. Heitala. Again, description below you'll find all the details to this pattern uh, which was another download I got from um, uh, I can't remember but I'll leave you the link so this is um, Leicester wool 100% pure wool uh, and dyed in this very very beautiful green and this was from a, a company called um, Border Leicester's yarn uh, and they say from sheep that live to grow old so this is not very commercially produced it's it's produced in small quantities uh, but they did say that if I needed more they would have this dye lot uh, so I've got this now which is not on the needles yet so let's not let's not say it's on the needles because it isn't <laughs> but it's uh, on the swatch I liked the pattern if you look at the pattern I only printed it out in black and white so it's quite hard to see but it's another neck down knit so cast on from the neck divide for the sleeves and what I liked about this one is that the sleeves are quite short you can make them as long or as short as you like but also the body's quite short I've got a quite I'm quite squat I'm quite a short person I think if they were doing um, the Lord of the Rings um, casting I'd definitely have been a hobbit uh, they would have put me, dressed me up as a hobbit. It wouldn't have taken much dressing up either. Maybe I would have needed a big curly wig. I don't know. But I'd have been a hobbit and I would have blended right in because I'm quite short and a little bit dumpy. 
I'm quite happy being short and dumpy, but that's what I am. Anyway, I'm not sure this is going to look nice on me, but I'm going to give it a try. And it's lovely. I'm going to read this from the front from you if you do download the pattern. It's a pattern with short sleeves, as I said, and uh, and it's a short pattern. And what the, the author of the pattern says, it's a little prose poem. That day the sunlight flickered playfully, creating shapes on the floor. The ball was reaching its final metres, meaning that there would only be enough yarn for shorter sleeves. And it was just perfect like that. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Anyway, that's a kind of on the go. And you never know, you might see that one of these days. <laughs> I want to show you the um, progress or lack of progress on the rainbow waistcoat. So wait there one moment while I go and get it. Now, I'll remind you what this is in this basket here. It's this fantastic yarn, uh, Kayunai, which is in a really beautiful, they do it in all sorts of different variegations, but I like this rainbow variegation very much. And if you remember, I'm making um, on circular needles, but it's one piece. I'm making myself a waistcoat. So the idea is that it's going to be quite a short waistcoat. There's the Hobbit again. But I want to tell you, I'm going to get a bit technical now. So if you're not terribly into knitting, then, you know, zone out. Come back in a couple of minutes while I'm talking about something else. OK, but for the knitters among you, you'll know exactly what I mean here. It's that's the f one of the fronts. That's the other of the fronts. And then this is the back. OK, so let's just fold this one where the there It's going to be like that. Now, you can tell straight away, can't you, that if I now divide for the sleeve, which is time to do, it's long enough now for me to divide for the sleeve, I'm going to immediately lose the gradation of colour because I'm going to be knitting on this short row, then the back, then the other short row. So try to imagine what that'll look like. At the moment, the thing looks very beautifully graded in... Um, I thought I had a hole there. Have I got a hole there? No, panic over, it's not a hole. It's just a looser stitch. The, 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 the grading works perfectly and I want it to carry on working until it gets to the shoulders. But how's that going to happen if I've got to snap off the wool to knit a shorter row? So I talked to my daughter who is a fantastic knitter, Martha, and we talked about this and I said, how am I going to avoid this? And she said, why don't you knit it as one continuous piece until you get it to where you want it on the shoulders and then steek it. Now, I've never steeked anything. She steeked load of, loads of things. Steeking. Let me have a cup of tea. Steeking. What's steeking all about? For those in the know, you'll know that steeking is cutting your knitting when it's finished. And traditionally it's done when a piece is knitted in the round, like as if I join that up and knit the whole thing in the round, and then it's cut to make it into a cardigan. Or there's other cuts you can do to, um, if you were to cut it and make it in one long tube, and then you steek it to do the sleeves, which is what I'm proposing to do. It's quite scary steeking, but it oughtn't to be, because as Martha pointed out, this is just fabric and what we need to do is treat it like fabric. Now it's fabric that would unravel if you cut it but there's clever things that you can do in order to not that, make that happen. So I, I carried on, I put a marker where the one sleeve will be and the same on this side and then I carried on knitting but then I stopped again because I ran into another problem in my head. In order for this to fit, I mean, when I introduced you to this one, it was like, oh, this is a dead simple knit. I can do it with my brain out of gear, don't have to think about it. 
it started to become a very complicated knit and because I'm making the pattern up as I go along I'm creating all sorts of problems. <laughs> However, first of all, can you see? The side is straight, that's fine, but when it gets to here the side needs to taper in till it gets to my shoulder on both sides. So I need to design um, a taper that goes in to make a, a neckline. And then the steek or the cut, which is where I've placed the marker here. And Martha, and she's done this loads of times, and she advised me to, to do um, three, I think it's three stitches of knit, one purl, three knit. So that you, I'm actually creating a, some sort of a, um, a mark there. But then, oh, I feel a diagram coming over me. I'll just do it with my hands. The sleeves are going to be straight, aren't they? And just like the, the uh, neckline needs to be tapered, the sleeve needs to be tapered too. So I'm right up a gum tree now. I've no idea what to do with this. I, want, I know that I can keep the rainbow pattern correct because I'm going to carry on knitting from this ball and it's going to carry on being um, in keeping with itself. But now I've created a problem of having to design an, a, a, a collar, a neck collar thing. It's not going to have buttons, it's just going to be a waistcoat. So I've stalled on this utterly. Now, for those of you who've zoned out with the steaking, you can zone back in again now. <laughs> because I've finished talking about that. But I think what I might do, I might get in touch with Arna. Because he is such an amazing knitter and he will know exactly what to do. A couple of times I've almost stuck it in the post and said, Arna, finish this. <laughs> but that's cowardly. I can have a go at it myself. But I might ask his opinion, see what he thinks. Because then I've got to graft the shoulders as well. That's okay. That's just like joining the toe of a sock. Okay, so if you've zoned out with that one, you can zone back in again now. But that's the progress on that knitting. Almost none. Big problem. <laughs> so the, the uh, Agnes's jumper is soaking. This one's kind of working its way into my head as to what I might do with it. The mitre square blanket is pretty um, not much further on. It's the kind of thing I pick up and do in the evening, um, you know, when I want something in my hands. And as you might be able to see, I've got Agnes's quilt back out again. And so I'm going to talk to you about that <laughs> because um, I think it's time to do some more progress on that. So let's have a look at it, shall we? So the last time we saw Agnes's that quilt, I'd sewn it all together. It's all in one piece now, but it isn't the size I want it to be yet. So. It's the kind of thing that has taken the place of the mitred square blanket. There's some nights I like to knit, there's some evenings I like to do hand stitching and I like to have lots of different things on the go. I think you already know that. So I've got this back out again and I've got this back out again, which is the box that's got all the base units in it. And so I'm going to measure it in a second and I'm going to decide uh, how much more I want to do on the, it needs to be bigger, it's not big enough yet. I've got lots of these made. Uh, I've got all my paper templates that I have lots and lots of here that I cut on my Sizzix machine. And I've got lots and lots of what I'm calling base units. I've also got um, a charm pack, I've got two charm packs that are the right kind of colours. But just recently I got an addition of some lovely new colours which are going to add in really nicely. It's always nice when you get an extra little injection of colour and there's some fantastic ones in here that, uh, that are going to go uh, slot in really nicely. So my evenings then are going to be for the next few days are going to be about making up some of these uh, hexagons and some of these hexagons just making up the fabrics into base units and then I'll do that thing I love which is watercolour painting with fabric 
and I'll carry on and I think I'm going to go that way a little. Way back when I talked about this the last time, I was talking about using the concept of the golden ratio. Uh, and I want to make this a little bit bigger still uh, and make sure that it's pleasing on the eye. Lots of people ask me about this one, about how I'm going to do the edges. And I have definitely got some thoughts about how I'm going to do the edges. And I, I will tell you when I get to that point and we'll do that together. Another question people ask me is about the papers and whether I keep them in till the end or not, and I do. So this piece of uh, work here is stiff with the papers. It's quite uh, unwieldy, if you like. Uh, but I prefer to do it that way so that the tension is the same across all the stitches until the thing's finished. So my next um, task then is to take these fabric um, hexagons that are cut beautifully, take these paper hexagons that are also cut beautifully, get one on the other and I thread based and I'm going to thread baste all these hexagons and make a new little swirl. Looking at it through the camera like that you can see that there's a big bit of green down there and a big bit of blue. These little bits of purple. So I think it needs to go out if it's going that way. Well it'll be interesting to see. I'm not quite sure but once I get my watercolour fabric head on then uh, this will come together really quickly, I think. And so what we're going to do now then, we're going to go and do the second part of Agnes's uh, jumper that's spending its first hour in the water. So we'll do that. It's some time later now, in fact more than an hour, which is what it said in the instructions. Uh, but I had to go to town, do some town things. So. I'm going to rinse this out now. This has had the soap flakes in. I'll give it a good rinse and then I'm going to put the um, fabric softener in. I'm trying really hard not to um, stretch it too much and when I'm finished with this stage I'm going to lay it out on a towel. I'll just turn the tops off. When I finish with this stage I'm going to lay it out on a towel and get it into shape and let it dry naturally like that. So rinsing all of that out. a little bit of this stuff in. It's like half a cap. That's more than enough. Okay, I'll leave that for another half hour or so and then we'll do the, um, the reshaping. I expect it'll be a day or so before that's properly dry. There you go, that's done. Yeah, so I've been into town, got a few groceries, and these pretty flowers. Because why not? I'll bring you back when I'm blocking this. So I've come over here now to do the last part of this um, blocking this jumper. It's a bit later in the day now and I'm in the near the sink and this window faces um, west. So the sun from the west, it's five o'clock now, is streaming through the window. I just love 
the lovely light that it makes. Um, look, I'll, sh I'll tip you around so that you can see what I'm working with. All the light on the windowsill there and the lovely west light. <laughs> I've lived with this window for over 30 years but it still gives me a thrill every time I use it. Now I'm going to tip the water out of here then. This is the final. This is the final rinse now. I'm just going to get all the excess water out. And what we're, what I'm trying to avoid doing here is rubbing it too much so it felts and pulling it too much so that it goes out of shape. So what I've got here, I've got this big old towel. And I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to I'll just tip you down so that you can see what I'm doing. There we go. think I might do is just roll it one time in the towel and give it a, a bit of a squeeze just to absorb a bit of the water And then I'm just going to let it sit here until it dries. Do you know what? I might put it on the windowsill. Yeah, I think I will actually. Because I don't want it right here on the draining board. Okay, let me see if I can move it across. I think there's enough room over there. And then it can just stay there for a couple of days until it's properly dry. <laughs> just a minute, let me do that. It's a bit way. funny sitting there, doesn't it, with all that coloured light on it. But I think that will sit there now quite happily unless cats decide they want to investigate it I'll keep my eye on that because the last thing we want is cats sleeping on it I think it'll be fine though oh hang on that's annoying now you we press go and it, it zooms right in okay go Well, it's dry now. I've had it lying on the uh, floor in the bedroom on a towel for a few days in the bedroom out of the way of the cat sleeping on it. And it's lovely and dry. It's soft. It's um, a lovely shape. I'm really pleased with how it worked out. The pattern, uh, I will leave a, a link to it in the description below. What I'm going to do with this now is fold it up very carefully, maybe put a bit of tissue paper in between it and put it away until October which is when my granddaughter will be two and we'll see it might be a bit big for her for a while but it'll fit her this winter I hope I'm, I'm pleased with this pattern I'm even tempted to knit it again <laughs> in a different colorway so thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up and while you're down there subscribe and click the notifications bell so you'll never miss a video whenever I post one 
Also, over on Patreon, there's loads more content about all sorts of things. And the link to the uh, web shop is down below where you can join the mailing list and someone every month wins whatever that month's shop update is going to be. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And hopefully one of these days I'll get a picture of Agnes wearing this. <laughs> <laughs>